Sharp as iron. We just like to welcome everybody out there that want to join us, have a heart to join us. Those who did and those who wanted to make it but couldn't, and those that will be joining us. We just like to just bless you and just send prayers over your life and just ask you to continue to, you know, to join in the fight, join in the discussion. Mm -hmm. It matters. Yeah. It matters. It does. Amen. Our mission at Iron Sharp as Iron is to collectively come together for Bible study. As we get to know each other personally, building genuine, godly relationships, only then can we truly come to love one another as our Lord commanded. First John 3 and 23, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. Remember, when we come in the world, we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We have no love for humanity. This is a process that we have to learn to be able to come to the Lord receive his spirit so we can begin the process on how to love humanity. That's something that doesn't happen overnight. Right. <laughs> Especially right. if you were wrong all your life to people and each other and to yourself. Yeah. You have to learn that. Yeah. Amen. And we thank Amen. God that he's seen something good in us and just begin the process in us. That's a blessing within itself. Yeah. And every day I'm learning new things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Pray us in, Sister Lindy, if you get a chance. Okay. Father God, I praise you and we thank you. Thank you for getting us through today and keeping us safe and healthy, bringing us together tonight for Bible study and fellowship. Um, please let us learn more and more about you through your word, which is the truth. Um, so, Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything that you do for us and and for everything you have done for us. We we wouldn't be here without you, Lord Jesus, Abba Father, Holy Spirit. Thank you and praise you. Please let us um, get out of tonight what it is that you would have for us to know May we commit it to our hearts and put it into action so that we may continue to do your will for us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Yes. Amen. He is so precious. Right, right. And that's the beauty to be able to get to know Jesus because that's the best thing that we can ever do while we're here is find our purpose. Yeah. Remember, broad is the way to destruction. But narrow is the way onto life that leadeth unto salvation. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. Ain't too yes, many people going to be here. That's what that means. So as long as I can get Jesus in the mix, as long as I got two or more, that's a thousand people. That's right. <laughs> and you know, there. really, would you want <laughs> to have that wider road? Because the wider road would give us that opportunity to sin more and try to make our own decisions and try to make our own way in things. And we could stumble along the way. Whereas in the narrow path, we feel more comfort in right. going forward. Does that make sense? That just came onto my spirit. That does. Came onto my heart. That does. That makes very much sense. It's almost like when I Moses see. had, when he had left and went to um, Jethro's house to his wife, where he had a kid by Zipporah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Israel was so much, and Moses had to judge that. So what he did is he set people over the lesser of matters, and he dealt with the bigger one. So I can see what you're saying in that. When there's a lot of people, that just calls for a lot of more things to be interjected into the congregation. Yeah. Opposed to having a small, intimate setting, you know what I mean? Right. We speak among each other, we can hear among each other, we can you know, try to know our way and find our way, most definitely. Amen. Yes, amen. The more people come, the more you have to look out for it because things start being injected into the, you know what I mean? All yes. True. And we're supposed to help each other, you know, um, along our way in our journey. We're not meant to do this alone, and we're supposed to help one another. Um, yeah. And amen. give God all the glory along the way. Right, right. I believe that. But as a man, I know that I still fall short because I know that I can be better. You know what I mean? I know where yes. I'm coming from. 
I know where I'm me coming too. from. I'm me coming too. from nothing. So to even be in this position right now, I'm thankful. Yeah. As I journey Amen. with you know, my family and with you know my yes. church family and with the body of Christ, I'm hoping to just to continue to just pick up things that where I can sharpen myself. Yes, yes. Amen. I, I know. I understand what you're saying. Amen. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Um, I'm still growing and learning. And yeah, I there's nobody perfect other than God. You know, we just we can't have that kind of expectation on ourselves. All we can do is to continue to strive um, and do better every day. Amen. That's what it's about. Brother T, how you doing, brother? Hey, Brother D T. Can you hear me, Brother T? I think he might have put his thing on. Mm -hmm. Might have to run somewhere. But let oh, us get okay. started. We're going to just have a practical conversation today. A lot of things okay. is going on in the media. Some things oh, are yeah. hard to interpret. There, if you yes. really think about it, there have been things going on in the media for years. Yes. There's been things going on in the media for years. There's been killing of each other. There's been killing of the white mm -hmm. man. There's been killing of the black man. There's been mm -hmm. a whole lot of things that has been going oh, on. Oh, yeah. But oh, the question yeah. is, now that we're advancing in life, these things are going to be more prevalent. These things are going to be more evident. These things are going to be more up in your face now. Mm-hmm. There's already a resolution that Jesus already gave us. And we're going to get into that. We're going to see the things that we're looking out are designed to get us to our purpose. So we don't have to endure the same thing. Right. Brother T, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Yes, sir. sir. Thank you. Hi, Brother you. T. Hello, Sister Lindy. Yeah, that, that's a good topic. You know, that's a, that's the truth. It's right in front of our face because our eyes are clear and we can see the spirits. You know, we can discern the, the, the good spirits and the bad spirits. So it's just, wow, it, it, that that makes it right in front of my face, right. too. So yeah. Now, Jesus already let us know that we got to keep our eyes on his word and him. If we take our eyes off of him, which is his word, study and fellowship, and we put our eyes on this life, which is all this news, all of this rhetoric going on in these wars, all of this stuff going on in this life, it can creep up on you unaware. That spirit of Satan, it can creep up on you unaware. And now you start feeling frightful. Now you start being fearful. Now you start being out of the will of God. That's how it can push you. And it's coming yeah. upon all of us in the world. Not just yeah. one person. And the scripture said, make sure you be able to stand in front of the son of man, is what it said. You continue to pray. You continue to study so you can make it. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's about us making it. Mm -hmm. Somebody else don't want to come. That's okay. That's their choice. You make it. Right. Right. We have to make our own choices in, in accordance with what God has for us. Amen. Lady got killed the other day. A lady got killed the other day on the news. Before she got killed, she rebuked that spirit in him. And said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people down here in their heart, they looking at all races. Yes, yeah, it's racist. It's been around for years. Yeah. So what are you going to do? You going to ponder on it or you going to keep gossiping about what's going on? Let's look what Jesus say about mm -hmm. it. Let's start right here in Isaiah 57 at 1 first. The righteous perish. So what this is letting us know, you might see somebody you don't know, they might be righteous and all of that, and they're going to perish in front of you. And no man lay it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. So we got evil coming upon this world. People are dying in front of you. Just because they died don't mean they did something bad. God might be Man. showing you so you can get yourself closer to him so you don't perish. Amen. See, we're people that visual. We need to see things. Just because that lady... And God knows that. that. He, he knows, you know, how we've learned it. And, 
right. and how to teach us. So he knows. Yes. Right. Amen. But my thing to say is just because that lady went through that, that don't mean she's condemned. That don't mean she ain't in the kingdom. She could be in the kingdom right now, but everybody's down here. Heart is manifesting. Right. <laughs> right. Everybody's heart is manifesting. Instead of looking at what they're supposed to be doing, they're gossiping about it. Their hearts is getting more wickeder. They got more hate coming out of them. Look yeah. at Jesus right here in Luke 13, 1 through 5. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. So Jesus yeah. that came into town and the Galileans have told him about Pilate who took some of their blood and mingled it with their sacrifice. Let me let let me let the brother in. Somebody trying to get it. Oh, that's Mandel. Oh, okay. He did he sure. mingled their blood with their sacrifice. Look what Jesus said. And Jesus answered to them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans, because they had suffered such things. So look what Jesus told them. Jesus told them, let's just perhaps assume that they went through that because they were worse of the Galilean. Yeah. That they suffered such things. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. What is Jesus saying to us? He's letting us know you running around here, you see people getting killed. What you doing about it? <laughs> right, right. You talking exactly. about it? You've been talking about it for the last fifty years. It's gonna keep happening because this is how it was designed to get you to your purpose. Right. You like that thing? Suppose they went through that because they were the worst of all sinners. I tell you, nay, he said. So they didn't go through that because of that. Oh. But look what he does point to. Unless you repent, you likewise going to perish. So I have a question. Back up uh, with that first verse there. Um, I had never read that before tonight. And why did, um, why did Pilate mix the blood with the sacrifices. So we know Jesus grew up in Galilee, although right. he was born in Bethlehem. Right. Joseph and them had to race up out of there because of Herod to take them down to Egypt. When right. they came, when they came out of there, their intention was to go back to Bethlehem. But Herod's son was reigning. I believe his name was Archelaia. So Joseph decided we're gonna just go to Galilee and reside there. Mm -hmm. When Jesus make it back to his hometown, Pilate is down there. He's the governor. These are Roman officials. Yeah. They don't got no respect for the Bible. Right, right. So he's killing them and he's mixing their blood with the sacrifice, mocking their God. Oh my goodness. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I he's get it. He's mockery of them with their God. Well, here, mm -hmm. take the blood. I'm going to kill it. Here, mix that with You know how people do. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's clear now. I get it. The yeah. same thing they're doing now. Playing with God, killing people, mixing their blood, mock, mocking God, all of that. Yeah. So that question they proposed, I mean, well, that that they told Jesus what he was doing when he came. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, just to say that they were going through that because they were worse of all the sinners. But he cleared it up. He said, I tell you nay. So they right. wasn't going through that because they were worse of all sinners. But look what right. he said after that. But except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Mm -hmm. See, what a lot of people don't understand is that Satan worked for, for God. <laughs> That's right. what they don't right. understand. Right. And he's going through weeding everybody out that ain't put themselves in position to have the blood over their door mm -hmm. Remember in Job? Haven't you considered right. my servant Job, God told him, who's going to eschew mm -hmm. you? God told him what to go do and what he's going to do to him when he get over there. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at these situations, what are we doing about it? 
Are we still gossiping about it? Or are we saying, I better run the safety? The only safety is in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's who the Father gave us to reconcile us to him. There ain't no other. <laughs> there ain't all the Buddha, all of this, all the Dagon. You see what the ark did down in, and down in the Philistine threw him on his face. Look what else Jesus said. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Amen. As we get to the bottom of that, Jesus made an example. And he talked about those 18 upon the Tower of Shalom fell and slew them. Think that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay. So look what Jesus told us. There's a situation that can happen to where it can cause you to be to, for your demise. Are you ready is what he said. Get ready. Anything can happen to any one of us at any time. But are you ready? Right. Right. We have to be careful of that because that, that's right. Anything that causes us to stumble, we have to be aware. Yeah. That's exactly what he said. He said, or those 18 upon whom the Tower of Shalom fell and slew them. Talking about in Jerusalem, when the Tower fell, 18 people got killed. I tell you, nay, you think they were, look, you think they were sinners above all men just because they died in the Tower? I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. So why you got light? Seek safety. Why you got light? Ain't no time. Any time, anything can happen to any one of us. We can go out to our mailbox and get struck by lightning, get struck by a car. Anything can happen. <laughs> but are you ready? Now, many people hear this, but they don't hear it. So we're going to continue to say it until they hear it. Isaiah 57 at 15, number 116. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabit eternity, whose name is holy, that is the Father. I dwell in a high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite heart. That is talking about his son, Jesus. He says he dwell in a high and holy place with him who has a contrite heart and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So what the father is saying is he's going to send his son to you if you have a repentant heart and a humble spirit. He said he got him there with him. And he is a man of a contrite heart and spirit, and he's ready to send him to you to revive you when you get mm -hmm. the same. Look what he said after that. For I will not contend forever neither will I always be mad. For the spirit should fail before me and the soul which I have made. So he said he got help for us on the side of him. And he's not going to always be mad with us. The soul and the spirit that he made is going to fail before him. Yeah, there were, there, he, he, it's not in his character to stay angry with us. Right. But he does want us to repent, like we were right. talking about before. Yeah. Amen. He does. He does, Sister Lindy. I just let those, you know, I mean, this is the Old Testament in Isaiah. And we see through the Pharisees, he came to his own, John 1.10, and they received him not. They were over God's people, but they couldn't even see God coming. They couldn't even see the Son of God coming, come to the front door. And we just read, that was in Isaiah. That's in the Old Testament. They had that prophecy, but God has to open that understanding to you. <laughs> Jesus been with the Father. He was foreordained before the world was. Although he was presented to us at a different time, don't make him obsolete. But our souls and our spirit are going to fail if we don't seek out for the safety that the Father has given us to reconcile us to him, and that is his son, Jesus. 
That's what we just read in Isaiah 57, 15 and 16. We see a lot of things going on in the world and we have to know our way. We have to be careful. Right here, Proverbs 19, 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So a lot of people are gaining materialism, some speaking good, some speaking evil, but they're receiving of the same materialism. Don't be deceived by that because you actually can think that you're standing right and be standing wrong because you are receiving materialism. That's a trick. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So whatever you got coming out your mouth, <coughs> you're going to get some fruit off of it. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. So you're going to get materialism for opening up your mouth, whether you're right or wrong. But don't be deceived because when your heart is misplaced in the wrong place and you're looking at God through vain materialism, you can be deceived. Think that you're standing right, but the whole time you're standing wrong because you had that mansion and was getting Bentleys and was getting everything of this world that you wanted. And that caused you from growing to where we're supposed to grow at. That's the importance. Anybody, anybody want to speak on that? We can't run and hide. Remember, we talked about the talents the other day. The talents is referring to Jesus, which gave us a parable, uh, like to a master who left his servant something, and he gave them all to their several ability. So before the Holy Ghost left us that, God knew what we can handle. But you don't go take what he's given you and go hide it in the ground. Share your testimony. Man. Share what God has done to you in your life, how he, he got you off this and how he got you off that. A lot of people are scared to go forth in a world that's going to persecute you for having the truth. So they hide it. It's a natural thing to hide what's going to get you persecuted. But it's through that persecution is how we gain obedience. It's through that persecution is how Christ is going to deliver us. Deliverance is a continual thing. It ain't just you running to the Holy Ghost and that's it. And we all got work that we're still doing. We all got work that we're still doing. That's okay. As long as we bring these things up so we can see them, we got space and room where we can work. Right here, Proverbs 17 at 11. You can't get away. Don't think that you can get away. If you, sometimes we could be witnessing to people and they might hear you, that's okay. And if they don't, we, we got instructions to keep moving, shake the dust off our feet, keep going. There's somebody that do. And evil men seek only rebellion. You got people out here that's rebellious. They don't want to learn God in their knowledge and their spirit. So God gave them over to a reprobate mind, doing those things that are suitable in their flesh. They man land with men, women land with women. All of that stuff is sick. That's their reward. They can't even see it. The world thinks it's fun and looks good. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. God got mm. cruel messengers that work for him. They come rip yeah. your arms all off your feet and you be found in the future sound. Yeah. You know, I um I just got to thinking when you were talking about that, that um oh my goodness, I'm losing it. Don't lose it, Lindy. It was good. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. 
it'll come to me, but I, I can't think of it right now. But I did want to say that, you know, I would sacrifice whatever I needed to as long as I was continuing to grow. Yeah. Because I think we all have the purpose of continuing to grow every day. Mm -hmm. Amen. We do, we do. I'm finding out things about myself daily that I need growth at. And sometimes, and I, and I love the way God, God does things mm -hmm. because we can't come into this assuming just because you've been called, you're supposed to have it together. It don't work like that if you know the Bible. That's if right. you know the Bible. Because if you right. know the Bible, then you know the characters in the Bible. Yes. And there was not one in there that was perfect. Mm -hmm. But still, where you've been called that, God desire us to grow, to learn, to share, and to use each other, to build each other. Right. right. That is clear. That is there. Amen. So that let me know that God wasn't looking at what men look at about your brokenness. No. <laughs> no. Definitely not. See, what men even in our brokenness. Yeah. And man even in our brokenness, you, that's where God... Man you for having that brokenness either. Because as God right. died, is what the scripture said. Yeah. God uses that brokenness to teach us. Amen. Amen. And to guide us. Yeah. Right. Just to clear that, Jesus that died, yea, nay, right. but is risen again, who is seated Amen. on the right hand of God. Amen. Day 34. So that's letting us know only God can condemn us, only God can convict us, not man down here. So knowing all that, we need that because in stages we go through where we feel imperfect where we feel, you know, feel like the heat is coming on us because we're infallible. I mean, we're fallible human beings. Sorry about that. We're fallible human beings. We make mistakes. And as I see David running through the mountain, being persecuted after he was anointed, he felt belittled. He felt like he didn't have nothing. He felt like he was on his own. All this stuff is a part of when you take your throne, hallelujah, all the things you want to have to endure, all the things you did endure, that's going to make you strong when you get there. You ain't going to want to go back there. You're going to remember them times. <laughs> You're going to remember them times. Hallelujah. Anybody, anybody else want to share on that? I was on mute and I was just talking away. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I just, oh, jeez. And then I realized when you were still talking, I thought, okay, either I'm interrupting him or, and then I looked down and I was on mute. No, oh, my goodness. You. you know, I, I did not realize growing up, and, and I'm sure many people, you know, felt the same way, but um, when we were being persecuted or bullied or, you know, what whatever it was that we were experiencing as trials and tribulations, I did not realize that um, that God was using that mm. for our good, right. um, you know, until, you know, just within the last few years um, where that's become clear, more clear every day, mm -hmm. you know. Side. I argue both sides. <laughs> yeah. Because we're going to be per persecuted just like Jesus was. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Yeah. If we're followers of Jesus, we will be persecuted. Right, right. And that's what we got to come to as being believers in the Lord. Things are supposed to be happening in our life. <laughs> You're living in a wicked society that hates the truth, and you've been filled yeah. up with the truth. And then if you really so think about it. Let me know how it, that work. Let me know how that worked to where you ain't getting persecuted. You ain't going it, through challenges. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's that's the only way that we're gonna know that we need to be working right. towards being more like Jesus. Um and that, you know, we're gonna it, it, he says in his word, uh you know, we're going to be persecuted just like he was persecuted. Right, 
So we shouldn't expect any less. Right. Right. We are going to go through the same thing. Yeah. Although sometimes it's really hard, right? It is. Because things can get tough. And just like Job, you know, right, you're right. things can get tough. But that's why scripture helps us, you know, to understand what we're going to be enduring. If you knew that you're going to be enduring persecution up ahead, then you will want to bring yourself to the fellowship so you can get strengthened. It don't have to be just to bring yourself to a real word of God where you can get yourself strengthened. Amen. Yes. First John 1 and 7. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, you will have fellowship with each other. That's talking about Jesus. And the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, is able to cleanse us from all sin is what it says. So if you're walking in the light like Jesus is the light, we have a righteous fellowship. And the blood of Jesus is there. He's going to continue to cleanse us, strengthen us, get us to where we're supposed to be. So when those challenges come, look, we're ready for them. Just like we're talking about in question, when the building of Shalom fell, we're ready for them. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we've got to remember that we're not alone. I mean, how many times does it tell us over and over again in the word that we don't go through this alone? Right. Right. God is right there with us. Most oh, definitely. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. How you doing there, Brother Mandel? We ain't heard from Brother Mandel in a while. God bless you, brother. I think your things are mute, Mandel. We can't hear you. Your phone is on. There you go. There you go, Mandel. You hear me? God bless you, brother. Are oh, you put yourself back on mute? It's had to speak. Hello? Yeah. God bless you. I think your phone, why your phone's going in and out of mute, Mandel? You just took yourself off, but now, there you go. All right, yeah. It won't let me get my screen and everything, but yeah. Hey, man, I'm doing good. It feels good to be here. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you, but I'm doing well. This is good. I got it just in time to bless everybody that's on here. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So remember, we're not perfect. We're just some people who fell in love with Jesus. We go. Remember, he first loved us before we loved him. Amen. When we was out there in that street Amen. life, when we was out there in that street life and the bullet didn't hit you when it should have, or the car didn't go off the road, or the last hit should have took you out, all of this was Jesus still working on our behalf when we didn't know him. Because yes. he knew when we got to a place where we could know him, we would be dedicated to him. Amen. Amen. And so, Brother Mandel, I couldn't get myself off of mute in time because I wanted to say hello. So, hello to you. Hey, God brother. bless you. Thank you so much, Cindy. Mm -hmm. God bless you, too. Thank you. I was wrestling with the mute button for a second myself. So. I know. It's one of the worst things on here. I just have so much trouble. <laughs> I really, really, really got a couple more scriptures, then we'll get out of here. But um, I I'm know listening. Made, huh? Go ahead, brother. That's 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 no major hurry. Go ahead. Amen. So right here at Proverbs 14 and 25, a true witness delivered souls. But a deceitful witness speaketh lies. You got a lot of that out here. Are people really delivering souls to Jesus Christ? Who the Father says he has in heaven with him? Who he's ready to... What was that? Oh, somebody call it up. Uh, sorry about that, you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, are we we delivering souls to him, or are we out there gossiping about all of our brothers and sisters and and doing evil, right? So, right. yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, right. That's because that's important. That's important. Exactly. Just like, just like we're talking about with the lady. Yes, it made news, but what are you going to do about it? And I'm not talking about people that are in the world. I'm talking about people who's supposed to be Christians. People who's supposed to be knowing God, people who's supposed to be knowing the love of God, people who's supposed I, to be knowing where our safety is in God. Can you uh, reiterate iterate it a little bit of that real quick? What happened with the lady? I know I missed it, but uh... oh no, we're talking about the lady that um, got killed by the police officer. 
Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, we spoke on that, and that's a life event that's taking place. But the Lord always allows to show us something, so us who's looking at that can know what to do. So we spoke on the scripture that's on the board, Luke 13, 1 and 5, where the same scenario was happening. People was dying. Their blood was being mingled with their sacrifice. And they told Jesus what Pilate was doing. But Jesus' yeah. response to them was, of course, that they, I mean, let's say that they went through that because they were the worst sinners of the sinners. So he's acknowledging that all of them are sinners. But let's just say that they were worse of the sinners. I tell you nay. So it wasn't because of that. But likewise, you shall perish unless you repent. So you see people getting killed on the news. Basically what Jesus let us know is the same thing going to happen to you unless you come and find him. This is how urgent we should be trying to seek him and look for him. Yeah. This is urgent. This is have something to do with you perishing and going on to eternal damnation. This is urgent. And yeah, and the thing is, people don't do not realize how serious and how real that mm -hmm. is. It's just like they just brush it off like water on their back. And mm -mm. and some of them, you know, saying you try to talk, you know, talk to them about it, and they're, they're, it's like they don't even really want to hear it. Or something. Right. I just I always got right. something better to do. And that's okay. That's their choice. Yeah. Let us true. make sure you hear it. Exactly. Because remember, broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way to eternal life. So it ain't gonna be too many people, period. We yeah. have to, as people of, of in this world, we have to face that. That everybody don't want the same life that you have. Everybody don't want eternal life. That's true. Some people don't want to be. You know what I mean? In a place with their families, whoever made it, to see them again. Some people don't. Yeah. And you can almost tell by down here the way they treat each other that they don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My my thing with, with that situation, what you're talking about, I'd be like, um, like um, you know, we should be, you know, aren't we supposed to, you know, saying talk to people because I don't want to be up in there and you know, when it's my turn, you know, saying to have my appointment with the Lord and he be like, well, you should have tried harder to get that person to listen to you or, you know, instead of just walking away. Well, you do that, but you can't talk to nobody until you first talk to the Lord because the Lord got to deal with you before you can deal with somebody else. You hear what I'm saying? We can't go blowing smoke and drugs in people's face and then trying to tell them to do something. Yeah. So yes, we do that, but do that after you get called. Yeah. Do that after God comes into your life, after you repent it. Like he said, and he cleaned you up. Do it then. Okay. We're not called to do that now. We're called to do that then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Lamentation 3 and 24. It's a joy to wait on the salvation of the Lord. You wait on the salvation of the Lord. We're studying. We're fellowshipping. We're doing the things that we do to get ourselves closer to each other and the Lord. Lord to commission you out. Amen. 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 And no, just amen. Just, you know, you gotta stay, gotta, you know, you gotta stay close to him and get a person build that personal relationship before we can build, you know, before we can give out the news to others. And and we gotta know this the spirit to even right. give the spirit, you know. So yeah. you do. You got to Amen. Have the right spirit so you can be able to give out the right spirit. Amen. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Amen. It's a practice, man. It's a practice, you know, we got to, and and, and, and and God knows we fall short, you know, so that's why we live all these years and we keep trying and we keep trying, but um. We want to get one time. We want to get one chance, man. And like Dar said, some don't, they don't want it. Basically saying they're not trying hard enough. They're not wanting it. You got to want it. You got to get tired, man. And, 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 and that's why when we're going through so much, our friends ain't there, our mom, our dads, our, nobody else is there. But God knocking on that door. Then we finally answer it. 
and then things get better and then we close that door up we got to keep that door open keep learning keep listening to his spirit keep listening to what he's telling us and then he will keep graduating us okay now i need you to do this t now i need you to go talk to these people out here go you know go feed the hungry go 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 talk to the to the to the unjust that's not there yet because you got a little more stronger in my word and that's how i begin it that's it's, I it's to you when it's when it's time for you to go but because, yes you know we're learning amen we're studying we're eating the word we're fellowshipping we're sacrificing mm -hmm. and what i mean by sacrifice is that we're sacrificing our wants of doings you know to fellowship we're sacrificing what our wants are doing to go and being closer to god's word and sometimes like now like in my situation right now he's kind of telling me to get away so i can get to him closer and I will be able to come back stronger, but by me not getting away, I'm staying stagnant. You know, I'm trying to carry everyone when I'm not even carrying myself right. Amen. Amen. So I'm listening and I'm just looking and I used to say, dang, man, there, but what's going to happen to them? These, the, those are God's children. He got them. He's talking to them just like he's talking to me. Amen. So they have to go through the sin to get Right. The fruits to know about what is out there. They got to be able to hear God talking to them first before they can hear me talking. You know, I, I don't even say, do, don't do this to my kids. I pray for it. Next thing I know, it's right in front of my face. They're doing it. They're, they're doing what I told them not to do, but they never listened to me. I prayed for it and I showed by example, and now they're just, it's beautiful. Now it started there, but now it's going right back to that's what I'm saying, right back to the bad again. And it's like, okay, okay. So, you know, God told, you know, you know, God, you know, God had Abraham and, he, and then he had uh, Isaac, was it Isaac? Um, and he told him to go east, you know, and, and Abraham, you go over here. That was Lot. You know, they, excuse me? His nephew, Lot. Lot, yes, I always get that wrong. Yes, and that's what it's kind of doing with me right now. And um, it's funny how my brother's coming back around, or me and him starting to talk now, and we're talking about stocks and we're talking about mutual funds, and it's right where I need to graduate financially there. But it's a good way because I'm I could spend more time with my father in heaven because I'm not focused on a nine to five or 14 to 10 working so much to get the money. I'm just being trying to do a smart, put this money up and let it grow within time so I can do my reading so I can do my fellowshipping so I can stay connected with the vine. You know, man, it's, it, it's I want it. You know, and it's funny because I listened to a rap song the other day and I prayed. I said, God, I you have made it so wonderful for me. I don't even like that music. I couldn't even bob my head to it. And 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 I was just everywhere I was going with this one song, I was noticing how off I was. And I said, This ain't it. This ain't I don't want it no more. And I and 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 I just did it just to I, I just wanted to hear the song. So yeah. You know, um, you'll, you'll feel it, but you got to keep going with it. That's what I'm doing. I, you keep going with it because you can pluck yourself out the, you can pluck yourself out of the spirit. You can pluck yourself away from the, the Lord, Lord's grasp. Amen. So. Yeah. That's why we got to just realize what we're doing. The yes. No, the Lord let us know, seek his kingdom first and his right yeah. and everything else will be added on to you. Yes. You know, yes, you only have one master. You ain't gonna lie. You ain't gonna have one master, and then I'm be your be your second master. This is mm -hmm. a jealous God. He don't work that way, you know. Right. You know? Yeah. So, oh, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. It's awesome. I look around, and I don't, and I dislike things that I'm seeing, right. but I'm praying for it, and I'm learning to handle it better. And not only that, they, it doesn't happen the right, the right way all the time, but it's a lot easier. You know, I see, I don't have to be mad. 
that I dislike what these guys are doing. I just, hello, hey, how you guys doing? And they respect me for that moment. They, they, they see me, or if they don't respect me, I'll just give them my good, my, my, my goodness, and they'll see it, and I'll just go. Go on about my business because everybody is a it's a narrow road and it's a broad road of 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 evil, of 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 those who will meet the wrong demise, darkness. Amen. So right here in Proverbs fourteen and twenty five. Let's read these couple of scriptures. And get on out here. It's getting late. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speak lies. So the only way to deliver souls is sending them to Jesus Christ. If you're sending them to anybody else, you're speaking lies. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you're sending them, you're speaking lies. Because if you don't know him, where are you sending them to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're sending them that's to another right. Jesus. Another Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's important. Yeah. Right here. Amen. Proverbs 14 and 7. Go from the lips. Look at how we can get out of the way of people that are perishing. Go from the presence of foolish men when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. People coming around speaking death, not speaking life, speaking tragedy, speaking drugs, speaking gang stuff. Get away from them, the scripture says. Of them that him did not speak in the lips of knowledge, who don't have knowledge coming out of their mouth. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. So if you prudent, understand your way. Try to get an understanding. If things are not clear to you, the people around you that are speaking, get an understanding. What are they saying? Who are these people around me? God gives us warning of the people around me, people around us, but we stay up around them. And then when something happened to us, we act like we're surprised. And they did stuff all year long to let you know they wasn't no good. Remember yeah. this. If they're no good to nobody else, there's going to yeah. come a day where there's no good to you. Man. The right wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. So the foolishness of fools is to deceive. So if I'm going on with people and they talk about hurting people, I used to do that. I used to go on with people, we're talking about hurting each other, talking about hurting people, and continue on with them. But when you get born again by the Spirit, God give you life. You don't go hang around with people talking about what they're going to do to somebody else. Yeah. Look, if they do that to them, and then guess what? They turn around and do that to you. And you knew it, but you still chose to hang out with them because you wasn't doing what the word say. What says, get out from amongst them and be ye separate. Mm. Amen. Amen. Bravo, this is right on time. Everything that you're saying is right on there. I'm going through something similar right now. What are we speaking on? Proverbs 13 uh, at 3. This will go with you, Mandel, and I'm going to let you close it out. This is what you were just talking about. This is a part of that, too. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. What are you speaking on? Are you talking about Jesus? Are you sending people so they can get healed, delivered? Yeah. Are you talking about the basketball game? Stuff that you wasn't ordained with. Stuff that don't make no sense. You're talking about the baseball game. You're talking about yeah. stuff that don't matter. Stuff yeah. that's illusion. That's hindering a lot of people from coming to eternal salvation. What are you talking about? The gossip. What are you talking about? The news. What are you talking about? I can see if we're coming alongside of people and we're just making conversation so we can spin it towards the gospel, that's different. But you got people all day long, all they talk about is Kamala Harris. All they talking about is what's going on with the world. No wonder they ain't got no faith. Yeah, the Olympics. Yeah, no wonder right. they ain't got nothing going on. Look what they're talking about. And I'm not talking about the people of the world. I'm talking about the people that are supposed to profess they know Jesus, who tell us to keep our eyes off that mess. Just for a simple reason. It can capture your heart. It can put fear in your heart. It can turn you away from the living God. Ooh. Mm. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Be careful opening your mouth. 
just to get in the, the bull or just to talk about things or just to gossip or just to be a part of something. Be careful. Yes, we witness. You don't got to be careful with witnessing. Well, you do, but you know what I mean. You ain't got to be careful with telling people the truth or telling them about Jesus. That's what I meant to say. You ain't got to be careful in that. Remember, Jesus called them all kind of vipers. Jesus called them all kind of names that they were. But there was no fault found with him in front of Pilate. Hallelujah. Speak the things of the kingdom of righteousness. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about that being an error. Tell them about that being not the right way to go. Tell them. Ain't nobody else going to tell them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Like we always said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son Jesus on the third day, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 and 9. Go and get baptized. John 3 and 5, Jesus said, no man can enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and by spirit. This is serious. You got a lot of people out on the internet, they don't understand something. And just for saying they don't understand, they want to just throw words out there and just screw everything up and everybody up with it, which they will be held liable for at the appropriate time. Water mm. baptism is the, is the correct way that Jesus showed us when he came down to his cousin at, at the water. John said, no, baptize me. Jesus said, no, baptize me so the prophecy can be fulfilled. One, John was filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody that baptized you got to know Jesus and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Number two, if the spirit do fall on you before you get in water baptism, God is doing a thing with you like he did with Cornelius' house. But Peter forbid, can any man forbid water? And told them, even though they got the spirit baptism, to go back and get in the water. It can happen either way. But the correct way, because God is an orderly God, is to get yourself immersed in the water. And the gift of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Be careful who is baptizing you. What does scripture say? Woman is not to exert authority over the man. How is she going to baptize you? Somebody that don't believe in Jesus, how are they going to baptize you? Somebody yeah. who say that Jesus is the father, how are they going to baptize you? They don't even have salvation. They don't even believe in the one who gives it. So these are things that we got to consider. That's why we supposed to be getting to know him first so everything else can be added on to us. That's important. Getting to know Jesus first is important. Amen. Amen. Anybody got, anybody got any last words? Anything they want us to pray for, pray for me. Um, yeah. Thank you for the great word. And it's just, I, I just want to pray for my, you know, pray, pray that I just keep wanting to learn Jesus more than I know myself. And that I pass it along those who, who ever I can get to. Mm -hmm. Whoever I can come along and teach, I we I, I want to do it, but I want to learn first myself as much as I can and keep learning every day. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's a good one. I want to pray for um, I have an aunt that just recently got out the hospital, okay. and I think what um I forgot um what exactly what exactly what her ailment is, but. It's something that came back. It's not a cancer, but it's I cannot remember the illness for what it is, but it had her um sick, it almost made her pass, but she pulled through. And mm -hmm. the thing is like as she gets around like she she can't be around anybody, like any affections or anything or mess her up. It's something to do with her back and her uh and her spinal spinal cord or something it's like if she gets any infections or anything. Mm -hmm. She just got mm -hmm. home didn't have just from being sick and uh and the thing is I was sort of kind of a little bad because we went out to breakfast and and right after that she had to go to the hospital mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to pray that she just stays strong and whatever the cell is clears all the way out this time and it doesn't return mm -hmm. what's her name just mm -hmm. pray, pray for her. Zach Travis 
Yeah, I could use some help with praying that God removes this uh, bladder infection because I tried to get rid of it twice and it keeps coming back three days after I'm done with the antibiotics. So something's going on and I need uh, God's intervention. And, uh, what's, what's her name, um, Manjo? Uh, Bizet. Bizet Travis. Amen. Amen. Dear Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, we just like the first, Lord, pray over my household, Lord. Pray that we continue to just seek your word, Lord, and go forth, Lord, in your word. You called us according to your glory and your purpose, Lord, and we continue to answer the call, Lord. Hallelujah. And we're thankful that we were called, Lord. As we go through this journey, Lord, we'd like to reach out to our brothers and our sisters, Lord, and ask, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to just work and Mandel's family member life. Lord, you know her name. You know who she is, Lord. We ask that you continue to just work the things in her life to get her according to the purpose and the plan and where you desire for her to be so she can have a successful life and go on to glory with you, Lord. I ask that you continue to just work in Mandel's life, Lord, that you continue to bring him forward, Lord, as he continues to listen to the gospel and to be in the world, listen to the world, knowing which way he should follow. The correct way is to follow the spirit, which is life, and that leads to eternity, Lord. We ask that you continue to download your spirit into him, Lord, where he can see what is the better offering. Hallelujah. I'd like to pray continually for the household of T and for Brother T as he gets himself to the word continually to make sacrifices, Lord, to sacrifice, to come to the word of God, Lord, so you can see his good works and the glorification of your father in heaven, Lord, that you can continue to bestow upon his life great riches that are outlast any man given unto him in this world. I'd like to continue to pray, Lord, for Sister Lindy, Lord, that her bladder of friction, Lord, that you know what she's going through, Lord, and you will heal her, Lord. You will put her in a state, Lord, to where she can go out and witness effective for you and being in her right mind and right spirit and not having to worry about that bladder infection, Lord. We just ask you as a whole, Lord, that you can yes, to bless the meeting, bless the, the areas in our life where we need to be strong at for each other so we can count on each other, we can rely on each other, we can listen to each other, and we surely can seek you through each other, Lord. We love you, we honor you, we cherish you in the mighty yes. name of Jesus. Jesus, precious name, amen. Yes, Thank you. God bless you guys. You guys have a good Wonderful night. I enjoyed it. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Love yeah. you all. Thank you for the beautiful, great word. Man, let it Amen. let it let it dissolve in our hearts and let us walk out and in 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 and walk in the word and Amen. share with others. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. God and Mandel, you stay blessed and so am I. We just it's daily. Daily thing we got to do, man. It's a daily practice, baby. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, so God forgave us, so you forgive it. You, we gonna forgive ourselves and forgive others and get back up and do it again. Never forget Amen. about Jesus. Amen. That's all that Amen. That bless you all. God bless you, night. sister Lindy. Good night, uh, Amen. Take Try cranberry care. juice, too, Sister Lindy. Try cranberry juice. Cranberries. Um, yes, Maybe. you know, I remember that from a long time ago, but I just didn't think about it until just recently. Yeah. The main thing that will help it. Yeah. Cranberries. Okay. You can get you some cranberries and eat them without the little bag. They're perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff. It did just say cranberries on them. And they're right. like raisins. Yes. Yes. You okay. pee out. You pee out red and be done with the done. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's the only thing that helps get rid of the pain and the spasming. You know, the spasming that goes on and it's painful. Yeah. And watch out for the waters and watch out for the wrong wipes and, and Yes. So I know a little bit yeah. about it now. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't Thank nobody you, hear you, Can't nobody hear you like Jesus. That's right. That's so he'll right. tell you. He'll tell you what you really need. Yes, he will. Amen. Thank you, brother. Star. I love you, bro. Love you, brother. Okay. Be good. Be Amen. Love you all. You guys have a blessed rest of the week. Bye.
Love you too, Sister Lindy. Love you too, Brother Mandy. Amen. Good night.